Hello and welcome to another little video on the MCE PowerCap. This time I'm going to show you how to upgrade the firmware within, within the unit. Uh, this is done by replacing what's known as an EEPROM chip, just like this. In this instance we're going from version 1.28C up to version 1.65B. However, given that it's a replacement of a chip, it's going to be the same procedure in future releases as well. Uh, the advantage that version 1.65b gives us over version 1.28 is it allows us to have up to three additional handsets operating with the, the power cab and it also allows for up to three either auxiliary input units or mini panels or USB interfaces. So it gives us the ability to add some feedback onto the system or use a PC in a limited amount. You've also then got support for the uh, Wi-Fi tracks Wi-Fi interface. This allows you to have a smartphone as a wireless throttle or even to use uh, the TCS um, universal throttle. And the other thing to remember is if you're using your handset with others that are already on version 1.65b and yours is on the older version then it can do strange things characters don't appear on the screen and, and various other little odds and sods. <coughs> so the first thing we need to do is find out what version we're on. We can do that first off by plugging the handset in. After it's gone through waiting for a command station signal, in this case ProCab, it will very briefly flash up on the screen PowerCab version 1.28c. Really a bit too quick to see. However, if you press the Prog Escape key five times, it will then say set command station in which case if you press enter, go into that, and then tells you on the screen power cab version 1.28c. So that's the other way. So the first thing we do is unplug the handset. It's also useful to ground yourself out on a radiator um, just to get rid of any uh, static that may have built up in your body because that can cause damage to things like the EEPROMs. So we take off the, the screws on the back. I've already removed all bar the one in the middle just to save on time. So the EEPROM is fairly easy to, to see, it's this big long one here. Uh, and what you'll notice is there's a little dimple cut out at the top of the, the unit. This indicates which direction it goes in. There are special tools available to remove these, these EEPROMs, but all I use generally, and what most modders will have, is a simple flat blade screwdriver. And what I do is I very carefully insert that in one end and just twist very carefully left and then right, go to the other end and do exactly the same. And hopefully it should then pop out without actually causing any damage or bending of the of the legs at all. Because you may in the future have to install it back and it's no good if it's all bent. go. And what you'll see on the top of the socket is there's a little indentation at the top there. Again that should marry up with the indentation on the EEPROM. Don't worry this socket it has uh, circular pins on. This one has square that both exactly the same. Again you've got the indentation at the top there to show you which way around the EEPROM should go. It just happens to be an earlier handset. <coughs> so we get the EEPROM out. And what you may notice is that the pins on the EEPROM are a little bit spread. So if it doesn't plug in straight away and it doesn't sit right, what I would normally do, as this one doesn't quite, is I get the EEPROM onto a flat surface. I use a piece of wood here, lay it on one set of legs and just very gently bend it in and do the same on the other side and that just helps close the cap up a bit and on top of that you're doing them across all the pins so you're not, you're not getting one which is more in than the others and what you should find is if you do, do it right I possibly just need to do it a little bit more so it should just slot straight on okay, I just need to give it a doesn't have to be lots. The thing to be careful of is don't you can't do it too many times because the joints will break eventually. That's 
I say, trial and error, just small amount at each time. Because otherwise, if you do it too, go too far, then you have to uh, try and pull them back out again. There we go. Push that in firmly, and we just do a very simple test. So we put the back on, we'll put the single screw in the rear. Plug the handset in, and what we should then see is it comes up with 1.65b, which it does. And just to double check, we hit Prog Escape five times, go into Command Station, and again, version 1.65b. Now it's upgraded, we can then just simply put the rest of the screws back in. Thank you for watching.